That's never a good sign. So I uh, was, <laughs> was literally about to press the go live button. And, and as my hand was reaching towards the, uh, the phone, I was like, what does that smell? It smells like plastic, <laughs> it smells like plastic burning. Uh, and sure enough, like a plastic spatula had fallen off, fallen off of the, uh, out of, in the dishwasher, like off of one of the racks down onto the, the element. So in fact, I did have plastic burning. It's not what I'm gonna talk about uh, tonight is my dishwasher uh, issues. Um, I think pull this post up. Um, I had it here a moment ago. This was on a Facebook site. I wanna talk about a couple things tonight. I wanna talk about this topic of trucking, kind of this trucking education. Hey Barb, um, I wanna talk about a couple of random things. I wanna sort of, I wanna tease something um, for Bella Floor. I wanna, I wanna tease, I wanna tease a we're hiring video, but, I, but more importantly, I wanna tease a, a, uh, a very different pay structure. Um, and I'm curious as to how that, how you guys would view this being sort of complete strangers non bellow floor employees, of course, that are just random drivers. I, I asked some questions about this about a month ago on a, uh, towards the end of a video that I, I think I killed that video. But I'm curious on, on your perspectives uh, for this topic. <clears throat> but, all right, so trucking education. There was a gentleman that posted on a Facebook page. Says, uh, hey, I'm looking to educate myself with uh, some, uh, some sort of small business classes uh, related to being an owner-operator. Um, and he sort of was soliciting feedback. And I thought that was a great question, right? Because I think there's so many people that are just yearning for uh, more business experience within this space so that they can become more successful. But more successful means a lot of things, right? To a driver, to an owner operator or a lease operator. Um, more success, for that matter, a company driver as well. But it can be more money. It can be more home time. It can be more family vacations. It could be um, saving for college education. It can mean a whole host of things, but undoubtedly a lot of people want to be more successful. And one of the ways to do that is with, you know, is with more experience or education. And I think that's the interesting dilemma. What most people responded to this, I think it was a gentleman, to Tony, um, I guess Tony could be, to this person, um, what most people answered was with experience, right? So a lot of the answers were things like, don't pay anybody, you don't need to do that. You can, one guy, one person even said, don't worry about it, you can get it on between Googling stuff and social media, you can learn anything you need to know. <laughs> and I was just like, no, I don't think that's the way to go. Let's not, let's not recommend that um, to this poor soul. Uh, I, I would recommend you not listen to truck stop attorneys and truck stop accountants. Um, that's just my opinion. But, but most everybody's answer was something related to experience, which I think we would all agree is really, was, is really important, right? I mean, experience in your job or your craft or your trade your profession, that's really important. Um, but what he specifically, the question was, I'm looking to educate myself, right? And I think that's the interesting difference. Um, and so what I said is, listen, I don't agree with a lot of the comments. A lot of the comments are ask other people, which again, I think that's important um, from an experience standpoint. But my recommendation was, man, go to a local community college, right? Those. Those costs, those classes are typically a lot cheaper at a local community college um, uh, versus, you know, another university or something like that. And I also said, you can do this stuff online. Because he had mentioned, he said, look, I need these classes to sort of be close to home. Well, you don't, right? I mean, you can get a lot of this stuff online. But my, my advice to this person was, um, you can go and get some basic business classes, but, but specifically look for some business finance classes where you begin to understand profit and loss. Once you understand that, right, I, th I think what happens is you begin to see this business in a very, very different light. And, and I certainly know that, that I did. I know a lot of you that I've talked to over the, um, 
the last year and a half or so uh, are the same way. Um, when we begin to look at things from a profit and a loss standpoint and understanding costs, um, we begin to understand that you know, cost per mile and cost per day, um, knowing what we have to have to run uh, our, 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 our company or our truck profitably, you, you start to look at things differently versus when you just are that person that said, I've just got to chase revenue, right? When you're just chasing revenue, that means your company is, a, is in a really bad shape financially more often than not. Um, and you're just trying to make money to rob Peter to pay Paul. You're just trying to make enough money this week to be able to, tr to not lose the truck or the trailer, right? So, you know, for those, for those that are interested, right, man, I would encourage the same thing, right? You know, go get a, go get a real basic business class. You, you can get some of that stuff at, you know, online universities relatively inexpensively. Um, but don't miss the part of understanding business finance. I mean, business finance 101, right? Don't, you don't need to go and get the advanced class. Just get the real basics and begin to understand price and cost and, and, and profit and loss and all those sorts of things, right? Um, when you start to understand those, then you kind of get into the next level, layer, which is you know, understanding some CapEx expenditures, OpEx expenditures, uh, those types of things and, and write-offs and, and write-downs and, and things that are gonna really matter for your business in a very capex intensive business, right? So um, I think trucking education is important. I really do. I think trucking experience is important, but understand the difference between education and experience, right? Because they're two different things. And um, and I think I think for those of you that want to be more profitable, you know, really get really get two of those, uh, get both of those. Excuse me. So I just, that's just, I saw that tonight. I just, it sort of struck a chord and I was like, man, I think that's a, it's an interesting comment to spend a few minutes on in a live feed. All right, we got a few people here. Let me say hello real quick. Uh, Neo, you're first, absolutely. Uh, Brian, TDS, how are you? Rich, uh, Ricardo, Wayne, Barb, <clears throat> uh, 53016, Pool Man says, I really respect your uh, knowledge and experience in business. I think you give a great deal of advice. My problem uh, with cost per mile or day is it only gives people the impression of how cheap they can haul for it. All right, so let's talk about that for just a minute. Um, one of the things that I advocate violently is to ensure that you, are that you are putting, so let's assume that you factor in all of your costs except your salary, all right? And, uh, and let's just assume that all those costs equate to a dollar a mile, right? Truck, trailer, fuel, blah, 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 fixed, variable, you name it, I did say violent canal. All those things, you add it together, it gives you a dollar per mile, right? Uh, the problem is you have not made any money. That's just a cost. So I, I, I violently advocate that you include a salary in there. So if your salary is going to be whatever, $60,000, if you average about 100,000 miles a year, that's 60 cents per mile of cost, right? If, how are you going to build that into your cost structure? So now your new cost is you've got 60 cents for your salary. You've got a dollar for all your other fixed and variable costs. Blend those two together. Now your cost per mile is $1.60. I'm not saying that's a number, I'm just saying as an example, but now you're making, you're, you're paying yourself a salary. You've got some maintenance figured into that cost and, and other things, right? So uh, worst case, yes, if you, if you haul freight at $1.60 a mile in that particular scenario, you're still paying yourself a salary of 60,000 a year. Um, does that mean that that's all you want to charge? No, right? You want to be more profitable. So if you can go and book loads that are two two dollars a mile, two twenty, whatever the number is, do that, right? But understanding your cost is critical because without that, then you can be running at a, at a loss if you don't know. So while I don't I don't disagree with your comment, is you said your the problem with cost per mile, cost per day is it gives them a, an impression of how cheap they can run it for. I, I mean, look to me that tells you what your break even is. Right, and, and uh, you wanna be a heck of a lot more profitable um, than just break even. And so that's why I really strongly advocate uh, that, that you're making sure that you've got cost and you've got your salary as a component of that um, and go from there. So that's just my two cents. But again, if, you, if, you, if that's your number and it's ingrained at $1.60, if, if, you, if, the, if you get stuck or whatever, that's your number, at least you know you're still making the equivalent of 60 grand a year. Right, uh, a lot of people don't do that. Again, a lot of guys are just chasing revenue. So, 
I think you saw every load uh, for what it's worth to haul it. Um, if uh, you can't predict how many miles you're going to run in the future, no, you can't, right? Not at all, all right? You can't. Um, but you can, you can, I mean, you, run, you probably can't say, look, I'm going to run, you know, 128,412 miles. But you probably have an idea of how long you want to be able to be out and run. Um, and again, un, you've got to start somewhere to understand your cost structure, right? It, with, if you run this business blindly, without having any idea of cost, you will run it blindly right into the ground. Uh, I mean, we've seen too many people do it. Speaking of that, speaking of that, we'll transition to a different topic. Um, <clears throat> I shared with you guys last week, uh, or last video I think it was, we had an issue with uh, a broker that really just shafted us. Um, it was Evans Fruit, some of you might remember that. You would think I have the phone number. Um, but I, but um, I kid you not, uh, so, I'll show you guys a quick, it's kind of a long story, I'll give you the quick version. Um, we put some terms and conditions in uh, with the next broker uh, that on a load that we did. Um, somehow those T's and C's didn't make it into that Raycon. Um, there were some issues with downloading it, so on and so forth. Long story short, um, we wrestled the whole next day about getting, about getting uh, that information in there. Um, we had nine and a half hours of detention um, that Megacorp uh, did not want to pay. Um, and uh, then, they, then, they re then the broker reneged saying, oh, I never agreed that I would put uh, those terms and conditions in there as this was unfolding. Um, so, so as it all plays out, um, the nine and a half hour load prevented us from getting, it was a one pick, two drop, prevented us from getting to both stops on time. So they wanted us to uh, deliver and they wanted to split it up. They wanted to pay for another truck to take it up to Seattle that had the hours of service to get it there. Um, they wanted us to cross dock it and then, and then uh, make the, the delivery uh, later that night. So um, we had been wrestling, right? And so the broker felt like, um, <laughs> the broker was like, cool, we got them. Um, the, the, there was issues downloading it. Uh, we asked them to send the truck there. Um, we told them that they they told me that they would send uh, the amended rate the the the, the, the Raycon with the terms and conditions in it. Uh, he didn't uh, call them on it, right? And we're trying to be we're trying to be professional. We're trying to be nice nice guys. Um, and you know our truck was there. Uh, the guy just they just continued to lie and lie. Um, they agreed to pay attention. Um, but then they started lying and haggling about, you know, industry standard this and industry standard that, whatever. They wanted to pay $150 for nine and a half hours of, of detention, uh, or five and a half. They said, you know, four hours sitting is standard. I'm not sure whose book, but nevertheless. So then what happens is uh, this load gets caught um, because they told us to start our clock at 9.30. We, should, we never should have even started our clock. We shouldn't even have rolled over there until probably two or three in the afternoon, right? It's produce, it's typical. We run a lot of this at the border. We know these guys don't even usually open until around 11 or noon, and, and we typically aren't gonna get, gonna get loaded until the afternoon. But this broker had swore that the product was across the border, it was there, ready for us to pick it up, be there at 9.30. Long story short, we ran out of hours. Um, we're not gonna be able to get there. And so they want us to end up in Sparks, Nevada versus Seattle. So I gave them a rate. Now, as you guys know, right, in those situations, um, so what sort of happened was the broker just kind of had us by the short hairs, right? And they were squeezing and they were just enjoying every minute of it. Um, and they did that all because they lied and didn't put the terms in the, in the, in the contract. And then, you know, truthfully, um, I should have just, I just should have just had the truck leave, I guess, uh, versus trusting them. Having said that, um, we tried to be, uh, we tried to honor our word, honor our commitment. Um, so now what happened uh, was they have to have this delivered into Sparks and they have to have it delivered like right now. And so I don't want to go to Sparks. I don't want to end up in Sparks. And so we gave them a rate and they were, and you guys have been there, right? You guys have been there. They probably would have paid twice as much as what we ask. Um, I made a comment here. I don't think there's really the F word. I don't think it really pertains to business, F word being fair. Um, but in deciding how to price this, I thought I would treat them fairly, even though they had treated us like shit and lied to us. Um, so I just jumped on that. I found, uh, I, I did a quick search on the lane, uh, the pricing. I priced it at uh, the 15 day average. 
Um, and then I added in the fair detention rate uh, from my perspective <clears throat> of what it should have been. And uh, they balked and they squealed and she wanted us to come down on it. She wanted all these, she wanted us to continue to bend over after she had just bent us over um, the day before and laughed about it. Now the roles were reversed. And, and I could have really put it to, to Megacorp and I didn't. Um, they didn't appreciate that. They, they didn't think that there was anything about that that was right. Um, they thought that we were trying to continue to screw them. I don't know how. Um, so we do our job, uh, we get there, it gets cross-docked, they deliver it, and then, oh, by the way, um, there's like a pound or two of overage. Of course there is, right? This is the load from hell. It just, just when you think it's gonna end, it doesn't end. <clears throat> so we deliver this stuff around, I think we get it off around six o'clock this morning, and uh, driver communicates, text, group text, text the broker, hey, we got 90 cases or whatever it is, what do you want us to do with it? Well, now again, she's so pissed, right? Because she was screwing us and then she, she got herself in a bad spot. I got actually a, a reasonable fair rate going into the area um, and now she's bitter about it. So she wants, to, she wants to hold this stuff on our truck probably until tomorrow if we would have let her. Finally got to around noon today and we just said, look, we're gonna turn the reefer off, right? We're not gonna play your game anymore. We're just gonna turn the reefer off. It's overage, we don't care. Um, kind of thing and so four minutes four minutes before I told her the time that we were gonna turn it off she she says okay you can go dispose of it All right um, I will tell you guys this that's sort of a short that's sort of the shortest version of a long long couple of days I don't know how many brokers we've dealt with over the years a lot um, I've never I've never seen um, and I've seen a lot of bad stuff from brokers I've seen a lot of bad stuff from carriers too I've never seen someone so dishonest, so deceitful. Um, I've, never, I've never heard a female broker cuss like this uh, for no reason. I've never seen um, someone treat a carrier with uh, as much disrespect when all we were doing is trying to communicate that their mistakes were causing an issue with hours of service, right? At one point, she, at, at two points actually, see one time she asked um, uh, something about hours of service. She's like, well, can't you guys just, can't you guys just keep driving? I mean, we might love to do that. FMCSA, not so much, right? They don't, they don't dig that. Um, <laughs> another time, this was yesterday, she'd asked the driver how far, I forgot how she worded it, something like, how far away are you? And the driver replied, um, 60 miles. And um, she's like, well, so how far away are you in time kind of a thing? And the driver who, I mean, he's just as frustrated as I was, right? Because they have... They have treated us with such disdain uh, for no reason whatsoever. The driver said, I'm averaging 60 miles an hour. And the broker couldn't figure it out. Have you guys seen that video? There's one floating around like on Facebook or YouTube. It's a few years old. I think it's like somebody's asking this girl in the passenger seat, hey, if you're going 80 miles an hour and, you have, and you're going to drive 80 miles, how long is it going to take you to get there? And she can't figure it out. The broker couldn't figure it out. But yet the broker on many occasions told us how she's been in, been in this industry for 15 years and she knows what she's doing and clearly we don't, but she doesn't know hours of service and um, all this sort of stuff. Uh, at one point she told me that um, my, my cost for um, layover was uh, unethical. It was three times the average. I'd ask, I'd ask for $700. Uh, I was told that I was being unethical um, and uh, I didn't know anything about the industry, uh, at which point I asked her, have you ever owned a trucking company? Have you ever ran a truck? Do you have any clue what the costs are to run a truck? In all your 15 years of, of brokering experience, Jamie, um, do you have any clue? Because she didn't, she was clueless on a lot of stuff. And it's okay to be stupid, it's okay to be dumb like Jamie and rude, uh, you, can do, you can be all those things. Uh, but to lie and be, uh, just um, so vulgar and disrespectful uh, to the carrier that is doing nothing but communicating well and telling you to the minute where they're at uh, and what we're trying to do to help solve the problem for them. Uh, it, was, it was frustrating. So I'll just tell you, if you guys haul for Megacorp, you've now been officially warned. Um, there might, I'm sure that there are plenty of brokers within Megacorp that are pretty decent. Um, I would really recommend against uh, Jamie and, and Juan. Uh, they'll lie to you. Um, to get whatever they want and they'll bend you over the table. So take that for what it's worth. Let me try to answer a few questions. 
Let's see, you heard it was Jay's uh, fault. We don't have enough parking. Um, some lady from Los, yeah, I did see, I heard that too. Uh, if you guys didn't see Canal's video, I don't know what it was titled. Um, I forgot what organization she was, but she was blaming the, the truck drivers for why there was no parking. Jared says, um, it's just a project to set up a plan, pool man. It's not rocket science. Nailed it, uh, go easy on Jay. Uh, his swan truck doesn't take up much space. I'm not saying you don't need to uh, know your cost per mile um, at all, but it's worth way more. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think we understand, right? Well, man, I mean, you're not saying you're probably not saying don't don't know your cost. Uh, you're just saying make sure that you're getting top dollar or, to, or you know for your value. Right? I think that's what you're saying. I think we all agree with that. Pro Liquor says uh, it seems many miss the point. Uh, knowing your cost per mile is only a point of reference in regards to pool man. Uh, logic would assume that everyone's trying to acquire the best rate. Well, here's the thing. I think that's a good point too. How do you how do you acquire the best rate? I, I think that's a uh, that's an issue. Uh, I had a guy from what was it New Zealand? I was reading his email here just a few minutes ago. Let me see if I can find. I, New Zealand, Australia, something like that. Uh, had emailed me. We were talking. He was talking about the topic was cheap freight, and um, and so I think there's a couple of issues. One, I think everybody's everybody's cost is all over the board. Right? Some guys have you know, paid off equipment and their costs are a lot cheaper. Some guys have brand new you know, everything and, um, and, and so their costs are a lot higher. And, and so if the guy's cost per mile is $1.30, I mean, the guy, and, and he's taking $1.60 a mile freight, well, the guy whose cost is $1.90 is pissed, right? Because you know, somebody's taking a load that's 20 cents cheaper than his cost. The problem is, the guy that's taking that load, in some cases, is making a really good profit at that. So that's an issue, right? The problem here, I mean, the, the problem is the, the guy that bought all the brand new fancy everything, you know, probably, probably didn't think through his business plan all that well, right? Having said that, what do you charge, right? And where are you coming up with the data to determine what price you're going to charge or, or what rate you're willing to accept? Right, last year's market, broker, you guys were all there, right? The broker would say, what would you do it for? In the past six weeks, brokers say 42,000 pounds, negative 10 on the reefer, yada, 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 and we're offering whatever, right? It's a different time. So you need, you need, to, know what you're, you need to know what you're willing to charge or what you're willing to accept, right? Kind of two different things. Having said that, I just don't know that a lot of guys are doing the research to, to understand what that lane pays um, and where to go and get that. And it's a tough one. I mean, you can pay for that. It'll tell you kind of the 15 day average. You just type in whatever. I want to go to Kansas City to Chicago um, in a van or a reefer or a flatbed. Then it'll spit out the 15 day average. And it kind of shows you the low and the high. Okay. That, that's at least a start, right? It's better than nothing. I just don't know that a lot of guys even do that. I think a lot of guys are just running around thinking $2 a mile. I, I mean, I just, you, you talk to the brokers, ask the brokers, right? I mean, a lot of them, a lot of them realize that. So I think that's a whole different issue as far as, you know, what these guys are, are trying to charge or, 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 you know, that sort of thing, how they're coming up with that information. <clears throat> Joe Harding's in here. How are you, man? My big question uh, is there not a government agency that the FMCSA has to answer to? Who's supposed to make sure they enforce regulations on brokers? <laughs> well, really, um, what's the broker going to do? I mean, here's the thing, right? When the, these guys are so, again, they're just really, uh, pr just highly unprofessional. And again, I'm not saying all people at Megacorp where I'm just saying Jamie Wan were absolutely some of the worst that I've ever dealt with. Um, which does say a lot, um, <laughs> but man, uh, you know, they were screaming and whining at us and, you know, finally, you know, we just had sort of pointed out, Hey, by the way, um, this load that you dispatched us on, it can't be done legally. It's been dispatched illegally. Right. And then at that point, you know, they sort of looked at it and you could hear them hang up the phone and they go away for like 30, 40 minutes trying to figure out hours of service. And then they start texting the driver back, well, where are you and how far can you drive? And, you know, trying to understand it. They know just enough to be dangerous. Um, and then they realize, oh, oops, we dispatched this illegally. So it was a whole host of, of, of problems. Um, 
But I mean, truly, truthfully, right? It's up. To, I would say it's up to the carriers to sort of manage that piece of it. Again, a lot of guys get really upset and they demand that they want to see the rates from the brokers. Why? I mean, what does it matter? I mean, really, what does it matter? Uh, the only thing that those guys that, that make that claim, the only thing is, is they want to know that they tried to screw the broker uh, as much as they could because they feel like the broker has no business making a profit, which is foolish. The brokers provide a service, especially if you're on the spot market. They provide a service to the shippers. Uh, go check out Canel's video, right? Where he had uh, that guy Steve from whatever, that, whatever his company was, you know, and he didn't go into great detail about the value that he felt like he brought to um, the carriers, but he felt like he you know, brought you know, a, fair, a, a fair number of bullet points to the shipper. That's all well and good, but you know, really it's up to the carriers to manage their business accordingly. You shouldn't allow a broker to kind of put you in a bad situation. It happens at times. Certainly we've been there. Robert Burns says the biggest problem with most brokers is that they never driven a truck. Well, yeah, I'm... You know, Robert, here's the thing. I don't think, yeah, I mean, look, I get where you're coming from. Uh, driving, a I mean, look, here's the other piece of this puzzle. So this driver, um, on the second night of this run, he was doing everything he could to, to get to uh, that delivery um, on time. Even after they had screwed us, uh, the one of my favorite parts of that story was when she realized, um, so she said she was gonna give us detention and this was on Thursday. It never came through. On Friday, I'm still um, being a, a, a polite pest, asking for the new Raycon, asking for the information, knowing that we're not gonna bump that dock until I have it. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and then when she realizes that, um, so we, ha we have a phone conversation about the tension. She comes back and she said, well, I'll, we'll, we'll give whatever it was, the $150. Um, and, and then she realizes that we're, we're not gonna make that delivery, right? Because of the hours of service issue, because they had to start our clock too soon. Um, and at that point, she wanted to rescind the detention. And my point was, the reason we're not gonna freaking make it is because we were, you guys put us in detention, right? So, but you wanna, you wanna rescind the money as if it didn't exist, right? Um, you know, and we try to explain them to them, look, don't have a driver start their clock at 9.30 if they really don't need to be there until three o'clock. It does nobody any good. Even more frustrating, the, the second night, as the driver did everything he could, the driver ended up having to uh, stop at a rest area with no services, no food, no water, no restrooms, right? Um, and and when, when I brought that up uh, to Jamie, she didn't, she didn't care a lot, she didn't care, right? She could not care any less that you know, our driver's doing everything he can. He stops, I mean, trying to get every minute out of his clock that he can uh, to try to help them out and get it delivered. No, no restrooms, no nothing. She don't care. So you're, you're sort of right. It, it would be nice to sort of put them in a truck um, for about a week or so and let them experience what you guys experience. That's one piece of it. The whole other piece is just understanding sort of the cost of it, right? I mean, I've read this number. If you guys do much reading on the space, You've seen this number floating around, it's $1.70. You heard uh, Canel's, uh, Steve, that guy, the broker, he made the same comment, $1.70 a mile. There's a lot of operations that are, are well north of $1.70 a mile, right? Um, but that's how they think, right? And that's their magic number. And, and just so you guys know, that number doesn't change if, if whether fuel is $2 a gallon or $4.80 a gallon, it's $1.70, right? That's what they're told. That's all they're told, that's all they know to believe. Just like a carrier, somebody tells, it, you know, some carrier tells another carrier, well, the broker's making 50 cent, uh, 50%. Uh, quite possibly that's not the case, right? Quite possibly that's not the case. Uh, let's see, uh, KC, Auto Doctor, Google reviews are very telling on my, my, I haven't even done a Google review, but apparently um, their, their reviews aren't particularly great. I'm just telling you, I'm sure there's some that are probably brokers within Megacorp that are pretty decent. Um, they've treated uh, me and, and our driver about as disrespectfully as I've been treated. Um, I don't think, yeah, that's probably pretty true. I don't think I've ever had a female cuss at me quite like that. Um, again, listen, if, 
if we had culpability in this, I, you know, I probably wouldn't be bringing this up um, because we'd, we'd have a piece of this uh, that we needed to own. Or if I did bring it up, I would tell you guys, look, this is sort of where we screwed up. Uh, the only place that we screwed up was <laughs> was trusting that they knew what the hell they were talking about um, or the right thing. Express, how's it going? Let's see, Barb says, uh, I watched a quick video by Indiana Jack. Trevor Loco is offering a free basic spreadsheet to try. I did see that. Um, I saw that before before it kind of came out. Um, my, my opinion on that is, it, it, as I looked at it, it seemed really similar to the OIDA spreadsheet. I do think the Travel Loco sheet is a little bit better. Um, I think it's a good, very basic cost per mile spreadsheet. Um, the, the, the problem is, is you, you throw, you, if you throw in your data, it's gonna give you a number for today, right? And if you go down two, two months from now, and you throw your data in again, it's gonna give you a different number, okay? Let's say you go in and you throw your data in today and it says $1.60 and two months from now, you go in and you throw your data in again and it says $1.80 because maybe fuel's gone up. The problem, the problem with the spreadsheets like that um, is that for the past two months, in between the $1.60 and the $1.80, you've been running however many countless miles in between those two months thinking that your cost is $1.60 when it's been trending upwards to $1.80. So you, basically what I'm saying is, to, to Poolman's point, if you're one of these individuals that thinks my cost is $1.60 and so I'm gonna be running freight around $1.60, but now your costs you know, are, are up here, you're actually running below your, your, uh, your cost line. So you, that means you're losing money is what that means for two months, right? So um, that's why I strongly advocate, guys, is that Stop waiting for me, Travel Loco, OIDA. Stop waiting for anybody to give you really critical information that you need to have for your business. Go to an accountant, preferably one that's in transportation. Um, ask them to create a spreadsheet that is a rolling spreadsheet that you can put in every single run and every piece of information Everything from the broker, their phone number, who you dealt with, what extension, uh, what your load number is, what your invoice number is, what your rate per mile is, what your cost, uh, all your cost fixed variable, all these sorts of things, and then it's going to spit out a number. Have them create all the formulas for you so that you don't have to figure it out if you don't want to. All you have to do is enter in a couple pieces of information, and, it's, and the formulas are going, to, are going to do all the math, all the hard work, and it's just going to spit out a few numbers. Those numbers, by the way, which are inherently wickedly important for you to run your business successfully and profitably, okay? Stop waiting for Traveloco. Stop waiting for me or anybody else. Go pay a freaking accountant to do it, right? I mean, it's, it's really, it's just a few hundred, it's just a few hundred bucks. It's not, it's not nothing crazy, right? It's not. Um, but the thing is, is like, it, it is so cheap, but the, the value it provides is insanely valuable, right? Yeah, you're right, Jim. You're, you're right. <clears throat> I look exhausted. Uh, I, you know what? I did, was it two or three nights ago? I didn't sleep, I didn't sleep one minute all night. Um, but I, I went to, I got, I'm all right. I'm good. I have a headache. Mate, I have a headache. You know, Alex, um, Alex's comment was uh, all non-essential trucking personnel always mistreat us. Um, I can, I'll tell this story. Um, the first driver we hired, Charlie, he went, we'd ordered a couple of, of new 780s. Um, I was speaking of that, I wanna talk really briefly here in just a minute about a new pay package. I wanna get, I wanna get some feedback. So right now, find your thumbs up, thumbs down emoticon. Um, we had ordered a, a, a couple of new 780s and, and Charlie went to pick his up. And uh, the, the salesperson, I could, Charlie had called me, I forgot what the, he had had an issue or a question or something. And he's got me on speakerphone. And all of a sudden I, I hear the sales guy, and he's got the door open, he's in the shop, right? So I hear the sales guy coming up and so I stopped talking, not, not to interrupt. 
he gets up in the truck and I can hear him talking to, to Charlie. And, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't call him out in front of, in front of the driver because I didn't want to embarrass him. But if I recall, I think I said something like, hey, I'd like to call you in your office and have a conversation right now, um, privately kind of a deal. And I did, and I, I gave him what for. I said, let me tell you what, um, in your perspective, that person might just be a driver, but that's the person that's driving the revenue that's allowing us to afford that truck. Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever speak, don't ever speak to our drivers like that again, ever. So help me God, because uh, you will never buy another truck from you. And um, man, I'm just getting fired up right now thinking about that conversation. Uh, but that, it was, it was mind blowing to me that that guy was, uh, couldn't connect the dots that the reason why we're buying that truck is because that driver was gonna pay for that truck. I mean, he was gonna drive all the revenue that bad. So to treat him like that, I didn't get. Oh, the Lonely says, Trucker, are you going after any direct customers? So we, we kind of are, yes. Um, we're gonna do some more of that. Uh, for us in the past couple of years, it's really tough for us, guys, because uh, we have three periods of the year uh, that we don't haul our freight in relatively short periods of time for two of those three. Um, and so it's a little bit difficult for us, right? Um, I saw another video uh, last night this guy was talking about, uh, what was it? He said like, uh, there's a million and some odd, you know, um, CDL holders or something like that. And uh, of those 90 some odd percent are under, or six truck and under carriers. And they can't really go after and attract uh, direct customers um, you know, because of technology and because they're too small and they don't, they don't add enough value and that kind of stuff. Some of that might be true to some degree, but guys, that's a lot of BS. I'm telling you right now, um, if you are an owner operator or a lease operator, uh, I would be picking up the phone and I would be finding out uh, and speaking to transportation managers, shipping managers, those sorts of things for companies that are near your home. Um, you can absolutely begin to work with them uh, as, as a small carrier, right? You can absolutely add that value, sell yourself. Um, if you can take a few loads of theirs a month, there's value, absolutely. So don't listen to people that say you can't. I'm not gonna say that every phone call you make, you're gonna get a yes, but, but I'm telling you, um, you can absolutely do that. You can. That's right, Alex, uh, you're right, you're right. Robert Burns, man, you, I'm telling you, uh, I've talked to a few guys that sort of do this kind of, these kind of channels and stuff and conversations about education for trucking. Um, and, and I'll just tell you right now, nine out of 10 of the people that we talk to have no clue, no clue whatsoever about their costs. Um, the scary part, here's the problem. There's two kinds of people, right? There's people who say, look, I don't know what my cost is. And, and, and that's bad enough, but, but that's okay. The, the worst part of this are the people that say that they know what their cost is and they tell you that they can run their truck for 90 cents a mile. Uh-uh, <clears throat> you can't. <laughs> I promise you, you can't. Um, so, I mean, we've talked about the, in, in that in a few other videos, right? I mean, between fuel and, and, and insurance and, and salary, you're already over a dollar a mile. So uh, those are the ones that, I, that are, are really concerning because they genuinely wanna argue with you about how they know what their cost per mile is. And you're like, yeah, no, you're not even close. Uh, let's see, Charlie's here. Um, <laughs> Charlie, we were just talking about when you picked up the truck and how the salesperson treated you. Mechanic says, uh, blue collar worker, workers uh, don't get any respect. Uh, and you know, I, I, look, I see where you're going and I, I, I'm not gonna disagree with that. I, I don't know that I, I don't believe that you can say, make that statement across the board, but you, you know what I mean, or I know what you mean. Mac the Trucker says, did I really have to uh, watch and add uh, as soon as I clicked on this feed. Listen, I don't control that. Um, I don't control that now. Once this uploads, then I can literally go in there. I can control every ad, right? I can I can put 20 in there. And a couple of weeks back, YouTube was putting them like every three minutes and I don't know why I did that. Um, typically it th throws in like three. So, sorry, you had to watch it. Um, <clears throat> That's what I know. 
Well, Derek Brown says, where do I get the formula uh, to know cost per mile? So here's the thing, actually, there's, there's a lot of formulas, um, uh, Derek. I mean, you've got, that's what I'm saying. If you, don't, if, if, if you don't understand kind of the business side of things, reach out to a transportation accountant and tell them what you're looking for is a cost per mile spreadsheet that has all of your costs. Um, but here's the most important thing. You wanna make sure that you are um, ha creating a spreadsheet that uh, constantly is rolling and tracking your numbers, right? Um, so you can, so every time you finish a load, uh, you can put in, you know, your fuel and miles and this and that, and the formulas are already in there and it just sort of spits it out. So depending on how that formula or that spreadsheet is built, the formula could be different. So Mac, the trucker, cool. But listen, ads are frustrating. Well, Canal, you know what's funny is um, when these started happening, I hadn't posted videos in a while. And so I posted like a couple of videos and people like instantly, they're like, oh my God, there's like a commercial every two minutes. And I thought they were exaggerating. And so I went and I checked it and I was like, it's literally every two minutes. Um, but what was amazing, and there was, there was like, people were still watching like a, an average of 12 minutes of it. And so my revenue was like through the roof on, on YouTube because there was so many freaking commercials. And thank, thank, <laughs> thanks to all the poor souls that watched 12 minutes of it. Uh, let's see, Chromecast dongle, is there no commercial? Play your screen on Chromecast. Ah, oh, gotcha. It does, Alex, you're absolutely right. Who needs a spreadsheet? I'll blackmail Scott. That's 70 bucks. Hey, so I want to talk about this real quick. I'm talk about our pay structure. <clears throat> um, and uh, I'm going to talk at a super high level. And so thumbs up, thumbs down, right? Uh, if you sort of think this is something that would be interesting for you personally, uh, or attractive to you personally or to, to the market, right? So here's the, um, so for those that don't know, right? We do multi-stop driver assist. Um, and so what, ha and then, uh, so, so, and we also require guys to pick up carts and bring them back. During our flower season, driver's checks are like way up here. During OTR, they're sort of way down here, right? Um, and so the ask, if you will, uh, is how do we sort of do that? Right? Because this is a tough, this is tough, right? And let's just be honest, a lot of drivers aren't particularly good at budget, budgeting anyways, which is why they want to be paid every week, right? And so when you sort of have that thing going on, um, it, it's, a, it's a struggle. And so, and so what, we've, what we've come up with is in essence, um, in essence, kind of a, a base, uh, kind of a base salary, you know, somewhere in that uh, sort of low to mid fifties, right? And then on top of that, we have sort of the incentives for like carts, um, you know, some some safety functions in there, uh, in, in those sorts of things. Um, the first thing I think a lot of guys think of is, oh, you, as soon as you guys start putting like you know performance criteria or that sort of thing. Um, you're gonna end up. You're gonna end up in a situation where you guys are gonna screw us. Well, we're also putting sort of a a caveat where it's kind of a get out of jail free card. So if some bad thing happens, if you meet another performance, you know those two sort of wash out and and you're still good. Bottom line is we're trying to do you know a salary somewhere in, in the for for new drivers that come onto us, kind of mid to low fifties, and then. Um, you know, with carts and some of these other things, uh, it's gonna get, it's, it'll get drivers up to where um, most of our drivers are, which is around the 70s. So the difference is, we're just kind of, we're doing the shell game, we're kind of moving some stuff around, we're trying to prevent this, we're trying to get more of that, um, you know, so that more drivers can understand, hey look, if I just sort of come out and do a pretty basic job, I'm gonna be making, at, at least I know I'm gonna be getting, you know, somewhere in the 50s, and then as I do these other things, again, carts, which adds a lot of money, uh, and some other stuff, it kind of helps, uh, helps that driver hit, you know, uh, make their way up to the, to the 70s. Um, and above that, too, we're not capping it. So I guess the ask is, is that something that's, that, that, is, that you guys feel is interesting to the market or not so much, right? Um, you know, I guess the, the, the feedback that we're getting is that that would be um, very interesting and very valuable. Um, 
again, I just sort of butchered. I'm sure Howard and, and Harding and those guys that are looking at this are cringing at how I just described that. But at, at the, like the super most highest level, you know, that's what we're trying to do. Canel, who likes you? Only the lonely? Is that who you're talking about? Uh, Harding says I'll drop off a spreadsheet uh, to jam my way to the office tomorrow. Super. Robert Bryan says, uh, what's your take on paying drivers by the hour uh, based on on duty time? Robert, I'll tell you, I would never, I would never pay drivers by the hour. Um, and uh, I just think it, I, look, I'm a big believer in that you incent the behavior that you wanna drive. And um, I think when you pay by the hour, um, I'm, I, I just, I can't help but feel, right or wrong, I can't help but feel that, um, you, you know, our guy, I just can't help but feel that we're gonna have guys, we're, we are incenting guys to just be uh, incredibly lazy and, and milk the clock, right? And, and that's not us. Um, I find things more, you know, when we go to this pay structure, when we sort of go from this to this by sort of having say, look, you know, here's sort of a salary of, of in, the, in the 50s, um, and then if you just sort of do some pretty basic stuff, you're going to be in the 70s, right? That's sort of how this plays out, 60s and 70s. Um, to me, when you, when you create that compensation structure, um, you try to create one that's going to incent, again, the behavior you want to drive. And for us, you know, it's, it's that we want guys to be safe. We want some guys to manage their fuel. Um, we want guys to, um, to, you know, not be backing into things and, and that sort of stuff. So we want... We want to have a focus on safety. Um, we want to have a focus. Here's the other thing, though. I, I think that by having something that's sort of a salary that's in there, I, I sort of can't help but wonder if that doesn't help guys be more safe in the sense that they're not worrying about that hours of service clock um, because they're going to be, you know, if they're out running that day, they're going to get paid, right? Whether they run 100 miles um, on that run or they run 600 miles, they're gonna get paid the same. And so, um, to me, I can't help but wonder if that doesn't you know, help a driver just take a deep breath and, uh, and then focus more on safety, not worrying about the bills at home and that sort of stuff, right? Um, so, you know, that's kind of my take. Let's see. Jake Snell says, I have no idea what you even described. Really? Say that again. I'll say it again. So we're looking to pay uh, drivers, uh, in essence, a base salary that's gonna be somewhere in the mid to low 50s. Um, the total compensation should be somewhere um, in the low upper 60s to, to the 80s, right? We, we'll have a couple guys there, right? If you wanna come in and work really hard. Um, so to, to get from those mid 50s to those accelerators, um, there's gonna be some very basic things relative to safety, some basic things relative to some fuel economy. Um, I, I actually, I didn't even wanna say that because that's not even true. The, the main focus on it is going to be on, uh, on safety and then picking up carts, right? Which our guys do normally. So all we're trying to do is, uh, you know, provide guys uh, in essence you know, a salary that they can sort of know, look, if I go out and, and I run about this many days out of the month, you know, I'm gonna be making somewhere in, in the low 50s, right? Again, we don't want our guys to be there. We want our guys to be up in the 70s and, and 80s, right? And they can achieve that with uh, bringing in more carts. Um, so what we're just trying to do is kind of flatten out our pay cycles um, or our pay ranges to allow guys uh, a little more, uh, well, a hell of a lot more consistency. Um, things that they can sort of count on, um, that they know is gonna be there, and then allow them to sort of free up to say, all right, good, if I wanna make another $15,000 this year, I just gotta go bring in 7,000 carts, right, over all of our seasons. So we're trying to, we're trying to find a level of consistency, right, um, that we don't see a lot of in the industry. Typically what you see in the industry, here's the big problem, right? If you, if you work for a company and, and you come out tomorrow from your home time, if, unless you work on a dedicated run, 
I mean, you have no clue what you're, what you're gonna make, right? You, some of you guys get paid by the hour. How many hours am I gonna make? Some of you guys get paid by percentage. Um, well, how many miles am I gonna get? What, who's booking that load? Do you have any say in that percentage or not? Um, some of you guys are paid by cents per mile. Well, how many miles am I gonna get this week? Are they gonna send me? I'm like, I sent a guy up to Seattle yesterday or two days ago. Put his right in the middle of the freaking storm, right? And uh, so now he's been, he, he was shut down for a whole day in the, in the stinking storm. Um, you know, so, you know, a lot of guys are in those situations. So there's just not an understanding of how much money am I going to make, right? Because one week it might be really good. The next week it might just suck. What we're trying to do is say, look, you know, here's sort of the base. Here you go. Come in, work this, just sort of do this and you're going to be somewhere in the 50s. Do these other things, which basically involves don't put the truck in a ditch. Um, you know, don't tear a building in half. Don't drag some cars through a parking lot, right? Don't do those kinds of things. And then you're going to meet some of these other accelerators, right? And then on top of that, uh, we have our carts that guys return for flower season. And um, those add up to um, quite a bit of money for our drivers. So, um, you know, you guys are going to be somewhere probably in those, like I said, you know, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty high 60s. Um, to to low 80s, right? Is sort of where that swing is for for the most for the majority of our drivers. So, all right. So, so does that make does that make more sense? Did I, did I butcher that less? Yes, Derek. Yes, Derek. Almond, uh, who's back into who's back into things? Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna name any names. Um, John, Aaron. I won't name names. Uh, no, I'm not the vice president of transportation. That's not true at all. Truck driving lady uh, sounds like it could be a good thing, depending on the details. Yeah, no doubt. Devils are in the details. Um, we're trying to keep it not very devilish, right? Um, truck driving lady, we're just trying to keep it pretty simple, pretty basic. Again, we just want there to be, we want there to be a, a financial component tied to safety, right? So um, we, I, I do, I want that. I want guys thinking about if I'm not sure, because here's, here's sort of how it is, right? Today, I'm not sure, uh, I'll just back them till I feel a bump. Right? If there's a financial component tied to it, I'll get my ass out, I'll walk back 70 feet, and I'll look. I mean, I'm just trying to change behavior one to behavior two by putting money on it. That's all I'm trying to do, right? Just trying to prevent some accidents. Robert Burns says, base salary plus incentive bonuses, I like it. Uh, driver stress about mileage pay on a daily. Well, that's, you know, that makes sense, right? You know, look, for us, I think, I think for most companies, incentive bonuses, they probably allow you to get about half of those incentives. That's not, I mean, we're trying to create incentives that honestly, our guys, we, I mean, our, most of our guys should hit all of their bonuses. They really should. Yep, bonus pay. Derek, got gotcha, you. Thanks, cool. Um, a little behind. I'm way behind. Actually, I'm not way behind. Carts are basically a back haul with a lift gate. The labor isn't a. Isn't a sweat fest? Oh well, <laughs> look. It, there's times of the year which, it, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty toasty, and and uh, I would say, yeah, it's a sweat fest at times. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, uh, there are times when it's, it's it's not so bad. What I can tell you is, um, we got there's several. I mean, Charlie's in here. Small fry, pigtail, um, Canals. He's done it. I think Howard's. They. He's done it. Um, it's work. Uh, and, but it, it, it adds up to some pretty significant dollars at the end of the year, right? I mean, you know, probably, probably on the really low end, it's probably seven, eight dollars for the lowest, uh, for the driver that brings back the least amount of carts. Um, and I, you know, I know a couple of guys are in here. I don't, I forgot what their numbers are. If they want to share them, they can, um, if they want to share what their cart pay was they're welcome to do that um brandon bearden says uh as long as there's not a max mileage uh that you have to do weekly uh that the driver can't control uh no we're not putting anything like we're not, we don't have any of that in there no right we don't 
you know, the way that we're trying to structure this, Brandon, is, is really um, what we're hoping to achieve is by providing a compensation, that's gonna sort of allow us to run the trucks at a, basically like a percentage deal, right? Where we can take some of the shorter runs that are more profitable, right? That's, really, that's sort of how that game plans. So we're not trying to, we're not trying to push a guy 3,500 miles a week anymore um, or 3,000 miles a week, right? We, we wanna be able to capture some of those um, shorter runs. The driver doesn't have to work, work quite as hard, um, uh, but allows us to capture you know, more revenue. Right, so we're more profitable. Only one that says uh, wholesalers at uh, farmers markets are interested in uh, uh, reefer carriers, no matter how small, they love dependable service, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt, it's a good point though. Brian Garner says, uh, sir, you're saying you're going to apply uh, safety as part of the equation? Yes, uh, so why would a guy want uh, to do longer runs when he has doubled the exposure uh, than the guy doing the short runs. And again, I think I just answered that, Brian, right? What we're trying to do is get away from those longer runs. We're trying to, trying to do, uh, take, take advantage of more shorter runs. Uh, that's better for the driver, better for everybody, right? So that's sort of the point, and uh, you just hit the nail on the head. Loaded Trucker says, uh, what about hourly for drivers that are impeded by heavy traffic? You don't have to worry about it, right? Because we're gonna pay you, we're gonna pay you for the day, right? So if you, if you only run 100 miles, you're gonna make the same, right? Um, obviously, right, that load's gonna pick, we hope, on time and deliver on time. So that's sort of your time constraints, right? Pick on time, deliver on, light, on time. So, um, so we're, you don't have to, again, you don't have to worry about traffic, you don't have to worry about some of that stuff, right? We're just trying to, we're trying to eliminate that. <coughs> yeah, thank you, Canel. And uh, if you don't mind, Canel, Mr. Mister, <laughs> drive safe, get paid bonus. Yes, that's it. Uh, let's see, uh, where are we located? So um, our headquarters is in Harrisonville, Harrisonville, Missouri. We're south of Kansas City, about 45 minutes. Um, we've got a couple other greenhouses in Missouri, and then we have another one down by Tyler, Texas. <coughs> Um, so for people that are interested in driving for us, we typically run regionally. Um, that region looks like uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, a little bit of Missouri, Arkansas um, is, is our primary region. All right, a little bit of Texas too. Messed up his title, sorry about that. Yeah, listen, you know what? You messed up a lot of stuff. Pig no, I'm just teasing. <coughs> there you go, Pigtail says he got close to 7,000 carts. Uh, and he missed uh, three weeks of our flower season. Yeah, that's a good point too, actually. So just so everybody understands, I mean, you're, we pay $2 a cart, so that's $14,000 um, that he's talking about. And again, he missed three weeks of flower season. So those three, we, those three weeks of flower season, I don't know what his weekly average was, but um, you're probably, he's probably easily around um, 8,500 or something like that. Uh, Carts, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> I have stole other side of of, uh, of Wheels Pretty Blue Truck. <coughs> Why don't I don't remember that? Put some razor commercials on this. Listen, you have no room to talk, LBC, none whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, that's another good point, right? I mean, Pigtail's been driving. He, he has not even been driving two years yet. Um, lots of families. Somebody told me uh, the earth is flat. <laughs> yeah, I, listen, I've, I've kind of been around it, and I haven't seen that. Uh, yeah, Brian, we do have a benefit, benefits package. Um, I'll, I'll be candid. I think our insurance is um, it's just decent, right? It's it's not like it's not. I would not say it's great by any stretch of the imagination. But we do have a benefits package. A couple of weeks of vacation, um, that sort of thing. Um, I I don't think we've missed getting a guy uh, on home time uh, when they were supposed to be home in a while. I I do want to caveat this. Um, when I have been, when I as a dispatcher have been giving adequate notice, which is like, give me a week, right? Give me a week. Get, you, somebody gives me a week, I'm, I, I, we've not missed giving them home. But no, it, now it was Blue Cross Blue Shield, now it's something different, I don't even know what it is, but yeah, it's, again, yes, we have insurance, it's, it's decent. 
Only the lonely. Uh, we have had uh, we have had drivers um, make in excess of six figures at, when they hustle. Yes. So the answer to that is, would I pay you that? Sure. Right. If if you yes, that's the cool. I will say this. That's the cool thing I think about our company um, is uh, with carts. Um, you know, guys have uh, an opportunity to make a significantly greater amount of money. Um, that you can't just, it's like for the average bump and docks, that's just not there, right? I mean, because t time is your component and, and you, you guys are dealing with a whole lot of stuff. For us, you know, there's there's a whole lot of cards that are out there um, and it kind of depends, I mean, time is a factor for that as well, don't get me wrong, um, but you can increase your income again. I mean, as Pigtail was saying, right? He picked up 7,000 and he still missed three weeks of carts. I mean, that's $14,000. No. What did I screw up? What did I, Howard just texted me no. What did I screw up? I don't know. I just said something wrong. So you got to jump in and just tell me what I screwed up. Uh, in any event, um, I mean, there's there's a strong potential there, right, for carts. Um, and it does vary, right? I mean, maybe that's what Howard's saying is that there's a variable. And it does. It does vary. So, I mean, it varies, yes. But if you want to pick them up, there's a lot to grab. Derek says, uh, I'm out of your region, uh, but I like how uh, you're uh, being real with people um, about uh, the business ventures. Too bad other trucking businesses don't do this. Um, yeah, I mean, look, we, we would love to hire people in our region, but I mean, we have a guy, we, we have, uh, we've had a couple guys live in Phoenix. We've had some guys live in Florida. We have a guy who lives in Tennessee now. Um, some of that stuff. Um, so it's not that we, it's not that we don't look at uh it's not like we don't hire those other people. We do. Um, we would prefer to have somebody with kind of within our region. Logic family, would you say? Uh, customer's target. Uh, I'm getting unloaded. Customer told me they estimated uh, seven to 10 hours to get unloaded somewhere in Texas. That's nuts. Brian, how does equipment uh, breakdowns uh, impact you know, your paycheck. We have breakdown pay. So, no, I mean, if, if the equipment breaks down, that's not on you. So you'll be compensated. Target just, uh, target just sucks. Uh, reefer is slower. You bet. I don't know. How, look, I, I don't know how much longer we're going to run reefer. Um, I mean, we'll have a couple of reefers, you know, for kind of uh, cold seasons, early season, late season for our flowers. Um, I don't know how long we're going to continue to run reefer. Um, I, I can foresee us transitioning over to primarily, uh, primarily dry van um, within probably the, the next twelve to eighteen months. I can I can see that. Uh, Jay could not handle the flower game. That's not true. Canal. Look, Canelo can handle the flower game. He had, he did have a few. He did have some bad days uh, with a, a couple of customers. I think it was in Arkansas or, or Oklahoma, um, and and he he couldn't handle all red, right? I mean, we all remember that from crying out loud, right? Uh, we couldn't handle all red. That's what Canelo couldn't handle. <laughs> <clears throat> Charlie, we have breakdown pay for everybody except for you. <laughs> yeah, I think I think maybe it was Arkansas. Is that is that what I'm gathering? Is that what I'm? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think we look. See what I mean? Like this was honest to God. Just so everybody knows that's watching this video. This was a year and a half ago, right? And look how he's still reacting a year and a half later. So. That's that. Man, we're over an hour. Let's start to wrap this up. This is, these are too long. Um, Adam says, uh, Canel needs uh, the air ride for his butt. <laughs> no comment, Adam, uh, even though I agree with you. Um, triggered, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that didn't take much, Canel. <laughs> All right. All right, uh, let's, I'll, I'll give you guys the rest of your, uh, of your weekend back. Uh, thanks for stopping and spending a few minutes with me, um, or a lot of minutes as it turns out, as it always is. Um, 
let's see, the trucking exec at gmail.com. Uh, as always, if you guys are making miles uh, this weekend or tomorrow, stay safe. And um, I, a few more interesting videos really quick. Uh, I spent some time with one of our drivers the other day. I, I haven't even looked at the footage. Um, we talked about some IFTA uh, taxes. And um, you know, I think so. I know a lot of you guys have asked about some of that in the past. I'm gonna try to edit that over the next couple of days and try to get it out. Um, so for those that are crazy excited about IFTA, you got that to look forward to sometime this week. Um, other than that, the rest of you guys, 